Well, welcome back. You know, your coffee may do more than just provide a tasty energy boost. Today's Nutrition in the News segment has the evidence. And by the way, Nutrition in the News is one of the segments we're going to be having. We're also going to be having a segment called Debunking the Myths, which I love that segment. And we're going to have a healthy recipe, healthy shopping, and we're going to have a healthy tip of the day. So lots of good stuff crammed into this show. But Sounds Joe, like what about coffee? Well, you know, today is Jerry's lucky day because <laughs> we're going to talk about hot dogs and we're also talk about another passion of his, and that's coffee. Mm -hmm. I've always too. been intimidated when I drink coffee around you, but now I'm, I'm finding out it may be okay. Leave the intimidation at the door, bro. Listen to this. <laughs> Turns out it, coffee may also help prevent the most common type of liver cancer. In Asia, where consumption of coffee is low, health officials report the highest incidence of liver cancer in the world. Amazing. Meanwhile, back here in the U.S., where you can't walk down a street without hitting a coffee shop, there are only about 18,500 cases of liver cancer reported each year. And that's low, right? That's very low. Wow. So, could your daily cup of joe actually be protecting you from liver cancer, as Jerry has a cup of coffee right there? Well, I'm so glad that something positive better. is finally being said about <laughs> caffeine. It was, the, it was the great evil, you know, thing. Because I was raised in New Orleans. I mean, I, I cut my teeth on it. And in New Orleans, you can cut your teeth on the coffee. That's how strong it is. So, I mean, I like to have my coffee every day. Well, Shirley, we go back to, and, and this study goes on to say that even daily use of coffee had an even lower incidence. And mm -hmm. whenever we cite studies on this program, this debut shows a good time to, to uh, bring this up. Um, we uh, to cite studies that are creditable. In this case, this study involved 60,000 people oh. over a two-year period. So this isn't That's some study from the... Study. Well, it's not a study from the coffee industry. Right. So let's give it... Right. The other thing we always want to emphasize is those people saying, okay, so coffee is healthy. Well, number one, you'd like to get organic coffee. Yeah. Number two, we're not talking about three pots a day. I think right. we both know that, right? right? All, all three of us know that. And thirdly, um, it goes back to God. Coffee beans were created by who? God. God. It's a plant. They gave a name right? for everything, right? And coffee beans were created by God, so they have a reason. And um, depending on what your philosophy is, my research shows me that, uh, especially in South America, uh, these beans were predominantly used by field workers as an energy source. Hmm. Really? So as they would That's pick these beans and other things in the field, they would nibble on these beans and uh, they would get their energy from that. So there's nothing created without a purpose. Every plant, every herb, uh, every animal uh, is designed to feed and nourish this machine that we call our body that is an amazing machine made by amazing God. Wonderful. Uh, well, floor director, could I have regular coffee <laughs> instead of decaf? <laughs> well, wait, let's talk about decaf, okay, because that's a good question. You know, uh, caffeine, no matter how good coffee is, but caffeine, you know, makes some people a little jittery and whatever, and I and keeps you awake right? because it's created for energy, like you said. So I drink a lot of decaf. I know you have to be careful about how it's decaffeinated, mm -hmm, but, does, but does decaffeinated coffee have the same benefits for your liver, I wonder? It does because the coffee bean... And really? the nature of that bean is where that's coming from. Now, here's where that can get altered, and this is what happens so often to our food. There are, there are a lot of your commercial, you know, by your food processing giants, you know, your commercial decaf coffee, to strip the caffeine out of there, they use uh, chemicals, even stuff like formaldehyde. Right. Wow. So there, I think what common sense would tell us that benefit is jeopardized, okay? But organically grown coffee beans and where it's naturally decaffeinated, yes, you will still... Uh, get those benefits, and that's a drink that can be enjoyed. You know, caffeine should be kept to uh, minimum by people who have high blood pressure, people who have anxiety disorders, people who have depression. Anytime you're you know, going up and down with your energy levels, you're going to uh, present challenges. So, Well, I, I would imagine then, based on what you just said, that the same would go for other foods that are recommended for us to eat, fish, chicken, and so forth, that on the one hand, those foods are good for us, but if those foods are pumped full of hormones and steroids and so forth, they can they cannot be good for us. They may be very bad well, that's for us. True. So we had and we're going to actually talk about those kinds of things on healthy shopping. Good. You know how to how to pick a healthy chicken and so on. Uh, let's go to a viewer question, which is interestingly about coffee, and I think we already answered this question. But one viewer said, "Does coffee reduce the risk of liver cancer?" So that must be pretty well known. I didn't know that, but um, but if so, why the liver, and and why not the pancreas or the stomach or something like that? Well, the, the liver is a unique organ. Number one, it's it's only one of two organs in your body that will continually rejuvenate itself. That's why you could actually have part of your liver removed, and it'll actually grow itself back. Oh my goodness! It's a cleansing organ. The, the, the liver is that filter that your blood goes through and, and, and tries to make everything better. The pancreas, which is what this viewer's question was, why doesn't it help the pancreas? The pancreas' prim premier job is to secrete digestive hormones like insulin. 
So it is not a filtering organ per se. It is not a blood filtering organ per se. So whatever property are in those coffee beans that helps the liver filter blood is not a property that would be uh, at propose to the pancreas. So I have seen or heard oh. nothing about it being beneficial to the pancreas. We had a viewer also ask about osteoporosis. Um, I've heard nothing on coffee. I think what they might be referring to is, and we're going to touch on this a little bit later, phosphates that you'll find in soda will actually leach bone density from your bones. Mm -hmm. So that, that's, uh, somebody asks here, I've, I've heard that coffee can reduce your risk of Parkinson's disease. I have seen bits and pieces on that, but I've never seen a study with the validity and the um, volume of people that we saw here today at this university in Japan on coffee. And it's just going to be our policy on this show that if we don't have a study that is, is valid in many respects, the institution in which it was done, the time period in which it was done, was it a double blind study, that we're gonna stay away from those things. I've seen nothing solid on uh, Parkinson's. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and maybe maybe Dr. Laramore could, could add something on that when he's here, but, but yeah, I hadn't heard anything about that either. But basically then there's more good about coffee than bad, as long as it's drunk, it's drunk in, in moderation. In moderation, and, and, and again, it's easy to find, uh, Shirley, we were talking about this the other day, and you were mentioning it, uh, how things like organic coffee beans, you don't have to go to, you know, the local hippie market anymore to find it. I mean, it's available now in, in commercial stores. Um, and here's the, the neatest thing about when you start experiencing organic foods, and uh, including coffee beans, you start tasting food the way it's supposed to taste. Mm -hmm. It's not All a of a sudden, sacrifice. It tastes better. It's not a sacrifice. It's so delicious. It's, okay, this is the way God intended to taste. It's like, you know, I'm sure you guys have, have had experience with this. My grandfather used to bring over peppers and tomatoes and stuff grown in his yeah. garden. It oh, just yeah. wasn't like what you bought at the store. And it no. makes you think, what did we do to this from the farm to the store right. that this is so different than grandpa's tomatoes, which I can go for right now. Well, yeah, me too. Well, maybe on one of our uh, healthy shopping uh, segment, you could tell us, you know, where you can find organic stuff. I mean, I, sometimes I can find like organic coffee at this at the grocery store. Sometimes I can't. So when I find it, I, I buy it up. And by the way, does it really hurt coffee to store it in the freezer? Do you know that? I mean, does it, have you heard that, that it strips the oils out or something? No, I've, I've not <laughs> heard that and I can't see how that could. But we're going to be doing that kind of stuff, Shirley. We teach people how to read labels. Uh, we're going to teach them how to shop for organic food. We're going to debunk myths. We're going to give them a health tip of the day. Excellent. Um, Wonderful. Well, wonderful. Boy, I'm, looking, I'm, 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 I'm looking forward to that. Well, everyone knows it's best to drink water. First of all, water is the healthiest drink. But while a diet, dieter's best friend is sometimes diet soda. But to keep the pounds and the health risks at bay, should even Weight Watchers sip regular pop? Well, we'll tell you that right after the break on debunking the myths. So don't go away.